I'd like to invite my good friend Ron Funches in to talk about his first set on our show. Hi, Ron. Hi, JP. I like that your your podcasting voice is slightly different from your regular voice. Really? You, th- mm-hmm. This is how you think I'm putting on you're a voice. You're putting on airs. You're putting on really? airs because you're not completely comfortable yet. Ron, this is like episode six. Give me some time. I am. I'm telling you what I hear. <laughs> I'm giving you all the time in the world. You watch Queen Latifah's first episode of Fresh Prince. That is not her voice. Then you watch Living Single. She's more comfortable. And then you get to Chicago when it's just off the charts. She's a, yeah, she, she is fully realized. A lot of work goes into a short late night stand-up set. Join me, J.P. Buck, as I spotlight the comedians who came up with some of my favorite coin sets. This is The Setup. Please welcome the very funny Ron Funches. Would you say your voice has changed since this debut? I think I'm more confident and calmer in myself and have more of a, um, I'm a better performer now than I was then. That just seems natural to be true. You would hope so. I would hope so. Chicago is an extremely rough place to grow up in, especially if you're the only brother on the block that's in the bumpin' Alanis Morissette. (laughs) So you ought to know, I moved to Oregon. One thing I really liked when I watched it was that I was always telling a a truth about myself. Like, I think that's something that I love to do in my comedy. I don't really like to, like, lie unless unless it's fun to me. I, I generally like to tell what my real life is about. And sometimes you don't do that when you're scared. You have really become so much more able to use the various tools of your voice and your rhythms and the tonation. And it really does give you a bigger toolbox when you're on stage. No, absolutely. Just learn to be more you, you know? That's, that's, Mm -hmm. I think, the biggest lesson I've learned through everything is not like to try to amass this outside knowledge as if it's, you know, it's, it's all within me. It's more unlocking who I truly am through, through life experience, through experience on stage, through just gaining more confidence and putting myself outside my comfort zone. Like right now, you know, I'm taking a lot of singing lessons because I want to do a Christmas show and I want to sing a couple Christmas songs and I don't want to be bad at it. So Um, And I just love singing. I sing around the house all the time, but I never do. And I don't plan to be like, oh, throw it in my act. But like, if I can have a new tool set that like people don't even know I have, it's really fun. I remember that the second guest was a kid from a horror movie um, Mm -hmm. and that he uh he was really cute but he didn't seem to have any stories at all and so i (laughs) was like i was backstage freaking out going like this kid's bombing it for me (laughs) 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 he's digging a hole (laughs) you're not alone i can't tell you how many comics i've had to talk off ledges one of the things about my stand-up is that it's kind of different enough and kind of personal enough that like Anytime I follow anyone, it's kind of like a reset. So I have to like just reset the room temperature to what I need and what I'm about. So in that way, you know, as long as it's not like hate speech or something, like I can kind of follow anything. You making your debut, I figured, okay, there's got to be some motivational, you know, support I could give, Mm -hmm. I could provide to Ron. And so I remember clearly in my mind, and these are the words that came back to bite and I had to change my advice after this. So this is 2011. I'm walking to the stage with Ron Funches and my last two, two, uh, three words were, take your time. Mm -hmm. And Ron. I took my time. Six and a half minutes later, you were finished with your five minute set. Yeah, that's (laughs) only a minute and a half over. That's not too much longer. It's very unprofessional in our business. That I mean that like you go five, five minutes, ten seconds, five minutes, twenty seconds, five minutes, thirty seconds, maybe, but a whole minute and then another half a minute over. I was concerned that I was gonna get some things cut out. However, 
I was keenly aware that I had crushed it. So I knew. <laughs> So I was oh. like, they're not going to be too mad at me. <laughs> we always have a post meeting where the producers and the writers and Conan all come together. We discuss what things get pulled or what things worked. And we sort of make little tight little edits. Like, you know, usually about a minute or two most out of a show. Uh, so they all look at me. <laughs> they're like, well, the comic would have been a half long. And I'm sitting there like, okay, uh, what do I, how do I respond? And then all, I mean, before I even had a chance, Conan said, you're not touching that set. He goes, pull one of my monologue jokes. I mean, you could just cut that kid, that kid's interview, really, is how I felt about it. If you <laughs> There's always someone that tries to make you feel bad about what you enjoy. I call these people my parents-in-law. <laughs> we have a weird relationship. I kind of treat them like a Walmart, which I'll explain. It means I really don't like going to them for anything. I'd prefer it if they stay out of my town. But I get a strange satisfaction from stealing from them. Claws break! Mostly because they believe I need a real job. I like this joke because it was just completely, again, one of the things I love when I watch my comedy is that it's true. Like all of it is so 100% true. Like they didn't like that I was a comedian. They didn't, you know, the, the main sentence I heard every week was like, you need to know how the real world works. You need to figure out how the real world works. You don't know what you're, you're destroying your life of your family. And, um, and I hated Walmarts very much. <laughs> I still, still do. If you ever get an interview, they always want to know so much about you. Like the soundtrack of your life or what type of tree you would be. And I'm a bonsai. <laughs> But that's my damn business. <laughs> it's so silly and fun, but also it, it paints a picture of this delicate little tree. <laughs> Thank that you. needs a lot of maintenance. Needs a lot, also needs a lot of maintenance and care and love. Like bonsais don't grow just in the wild. Yeah, and you can see it in my hair and my, my style at the time. We're like, he needs some pruning and some taking care of. And if you get past that, there's a drug test that's never fair. One time they tried to give me a mouth swab drug test, which is where they take a piece of cotton, run the inside of your cheek to get your DNA, and that's how they find out what you like to do. That's against everything I believe in. Because there's no way I'm gonna let you take something that you made my people pick 200 years ago. <laughs> and then turn around to use it to deny me a job. You've built up to this because I think what's, what's nice is they don't see this coming. There's there's social commentary in this joke that you haven't done up until this point, really. This joke, the Walmart joke, there's a lot of like anti, um, I guess I wouldn't say necessarily truly anti-capitalism, but an just more humanistic, I guess. Just seeing some of the negative in, in, the, in the structure of things and the structure of the things that, that had to do to get a job in order to get a job that I did not want in order to try to take care of my son, you know, like, like I, don't, I mean, I think there's maybe a little bit of ego again there, but I was just like, I don't even want this. I don't even want this. I'm trying to do this to be responsible and you're throwing up every barrier. And would you steal from us? If you saw someone stealing, would you snitch or would you not snitch? And uh, what type of tree would you be? Oh, like <laughs> these were like the real questions on this thing where they're deciding whether they're gonna give me a job. And I was like, what does this have to do with anything? You know, just give me the job or not. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew that's how you treated your employees, 
I would have never have taken the time to duct tape this Cheetos bag full of urine to my leg. <laughs> That was a waste of mine and my son's day. What I love is this, you make your point here and you then move on. Like you're not hitting them over the head with it. Mm -hmm. You make it, you move on. And then you, you have this fun, really silly, <laughs> illuminating tag that tops everything. But have you ever not done the tag? Had the joke ever existed before without it? No, no, that this joke was originally just a semi true story about how I had to use my son's pay to get this job at Wachovia Bank. So <laughs> that part was always the end of it. Um, if anything, I think the um, cotton picking thing came in a little bit later. And originally, I was kind of afraid to do it because I thought it was a little bit base level commentary as far as like um like to me that's easy to get to but then when i said it every time i said it people i mean sometimes people would groan but every time it got a reaction so i was like mm -hmm. oh there's like there's something here what i love about seeing you two come together it's the first time he's met you. It's almost like a, when Harry met Sally because he loves you so much. It's like a, it's like a little bit of a romance, comedy romance <laughs> between the two of you. It's nice seeing that moment when it first started. The best moment of that set that I remember, like I can almost travel back in time to that moment was doing a joke and then hearing the audience laugh and then just hearing on my right ear, Conan laugh. And mm. I was like, oh, okay. I'm good at comedy. If I can make <laughs> him laugh, I'm good at this job. I don't think I would be the comedian that I am if if, if it wasn't for the work that you guys have done. You guys um, kind of let me you know, like, or, or at least showed me a way to just do weird, fun comedy um, that doesn't necessarily pick on people or um, try to be like, or doesn't like try to be in the zeitgeist all the time doesn't try to be so political and so like what what is everyone else talking about like you guys kind of do your own thing and that's something i have always gravitated towards someone told me don't be happy to be here don't think about all the people who said who are excited for you to be here who said oh you made it we knew you would made it think about all the people who told you you would never get here and show them wrong and show them why they you, they were wrong and that really helped helped me out a lot you were talking about getting into that sort of zen place sometimes uh before a big set doing my mantra which is which is that it's not from me or within me that these abilities flow, but through me that I need to go out there and just work within the best of my abilities that I will make mistakes. And I need to just understand, go with that and, and lean into it and go out there and have fun. That's, that's pretty much it. Well, thanks, but I really appreciate this. I appreciate you, JP. Thanks for having me. What do you think about my hosting voice? Has it gotten better or am I still putting it on airs a little bit? No, the more we talk, the more you got comfortable and you just started talking like the JP that I know and love. <laughs> it was really just the beginning thing where you're just like, and guys, we're <laughs> Go easy on me. I am. I'm, I'm still I'm still still a newbie. Hey, what if you never gave me notes? <laughs> <laughs>